Right, on now to a segment here we call Waiting for Life, and we share the need for those who are in need of an organ transplant. Not too long ago, we had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Chuck Elliott from Cedarville University. Who'd you bring with you today? This is my department chair, Dr. Derek Green. Right. Soon to be Dr. Derek Green. Uh, yes. Welcome to you. I know you help coordinate something called Deep Calls for Life. Yes, basically <laughs> what I did was at the beginning of last school year in one of my classes called virtual communication I said to the students I need a group of people who to do something amazing I'm not gonna tell you what it is until you commit but I need you to do something amazing and the group that became deep cause came to me and said we're willing to take the challenge and I said okay here's what the situation is I shared Dr. Elliot's story with them and they just oh Dr. Elliot we want oh yes we want to help him and they took it from there all right let's uh, go back to that story then because we did share a little bit about deep calls for life the students did as he said rise to the challenge they found out recently however that one of their professors needed the gift of life and they have risen to the challenge I've had uh, kidney disease for about 20 years and uh, it, it's been well managed um, but in the last year, the kidneys started to, to deteriorate pretty quickly. Dr. Chuck Elliott is a communications professor here at this faith-based university. He says his only option now is an organ transplant, and his ideal option is a living kidney donor. And the fact is, most of the people on the national waiting list are people in need of kidney transplants. We can absolutely decrease that weight with more living kidney donors. So this team of communications and marketing students who sat down with us with Dr. Elliott launched a digital campaign as part of a marketing project. Their goal is to find Dr. Elliott a living kidney donor through a campaign called Deep Calls for Life. Um, basically, the idea is that we're going to educate people on how to be a donor and why. You see, the students say on campus they've learned from Dr. Elliott that in deep times of need, there's a powerful presence from above. People love him and they want to support him because of the support they receive from him. Through the power of social media, the project already has more than 500 followers. I think it showed me kind of the power of what she said, like community and how much God is like taking a hold of this because mm -hmm. this is happening and we didn't expect this and it's just a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing because you ended up with a donor. That was certainly the mission. Yeah. And tell me who uh, became your donor. Actually, it was my brother-in-law, my wife's brother. No kidding. Yeah. In the meantime, however, the students really rallied, did they not? The students did a phenomenal job. And uh, one of the things that I try to teach them at the very beginning is, first of all, communication is a gift from God. Let's steward it well. Let's use it well. And then the second thing was that we hear so much negativity and all these types of things about social media. I teach them that it's a tool, and it's a tool that can be used to impact life. And that's what we had here is that it was a tool that was used to impact life. Well, no kidding about that. Let's hear from your brother-in-law because he recently just sent uh, this video that shared a little bit about his journey. Well, as you can see, I made it through the surgery and I'm well on my way to recovery. We had a couple of blip, blips along the way. I, um, like Terry, I had an episode of atrial fibrillation a couple days after surgery. So now I've got to go through a whole bunch of heart monitor tests and all that kind of stuff. Um, and a couple of infections, but uh, the awesome thing is that my kidney is now functioning with flying colors inside Chuck's body. I choke up when I hear that. Just thinking about that, yeah. you must just be amazed at the miracle, huh? It, it, it was truly miraculous because the, the kidney started working almost immediately. And um, I had a fully functioning kidney for the first time in two decades. Wow. Do you feel like a new person? Yes. It's amazing. Um, my surgeon came to see me as I came out of uh, uh, um, the anesthesia in re recovery and she said, how are you doing? And I said, I feel better than I have in ages, in ages. And she said, 
Who says that after five hours of surgery? You know? Somebody who's been needing a kidney for a long yes. time. They say it's yes. often just as hard on the donor, but the person who gets the kidney feels better. Um, you brought a t-shirt for us, and we do want to talk a little bit about your brother-in-law. He had to, they think, get healthier to give to you, did he not? He did. Yeah. He did. He, um, uh, he was a little bit overweight, and um, they, they take very good care of the donors so that um, they have to meet certain qualifications and um, he worked very very hard to um, to lose 20 pounds and once he had gotten close to that goal they said you're you're um, you're able to do this now and well that's a dedicated brother-in-law somebody that would go lose 20 pounds for you okay yeah. tell me about this this is the shirt that um, I got um, my donor John he got one that um, says living donor on it Aww. and so um, it just stresses the need for more people to think about becoming a living donor and that's why we're here today and I think no matter even though maybe the donor wasn't a stranger and you got lucky that someone not blood related to you was yeah. able to do that was that really part of your plan to raise awareness well absolutely we we talked about the very beginning of the project as we were setting goals and benchmarks there's no way we can guarantee that uh, this project is going to lead to Dr. Elliott finding the donor. We can't guarantee that, but what we can guarantee is that we can do research and we can raise awareness and perhaps even in an age group when you consider the users of social media, perhaps even an age group doesn't think about it a lot. And so the emphasis was on living donation, and but the emphasis was also on raising awareness that there are people out there that would benefit uh, from understanding this and even the willingness to be tested and be cons considered which students on that team did uh, uh uh, go through the process to see if they would be a match for Dr. Elliot. And who knows where that will lead because now True. they're in a registry and willing perhaps to, to meet up with someone else that Absolutely. might need that. Yes. So final thought, you've had this whole amazing journey. We'd love to have people back and share that God bless your life and you found this. What is it that you want us to say? Uh, lots of lessons, lots of things learned <clears throat> Excuse me. on the journey. Um, I, I have learned a new meaning of gratitude. Because how can you say thank you enough to the person that has done so much to save your life? And so I, I feel like I'm doubly redeemed. God has redeemed my soul, um, but also my life. And not much you can say beyond that. How amazing. Great to have you back. We're so, we love to share follow-ups because people often ask, what happened? Did they sure. get it? So we're so glad you're here. We'll continue to follow your health. Thanks Thank for what you're doing and just being an amazing role model to students. Social media for good. There's a new concept. All right. We, we appreciate you guys coming down all the way from Cedarville University, and we have details. If you'd like to find out more about the programs they're part of and what's happening in health.